On a platform in a station in Berlin, a group have come to look at a locomotive. But these are no ordinary train spotters and this is no ordinary train. It runs not on electricity or diesel, but hydrogen. It is a glimpse of the future. A future, it turns out, we've already glimpsed before, because hydrogen has been the fuel to save the world ever since the 19th century. In the 30s, the 50s, the 70s, we were told hydrogen cars and planes weren't just science fiction, they were just around the next page. And so, here we go again. Please come in, we will leave soon. Thank you. We're already behind the schedule again. But what if it is real? What if this time it isn't just sci-fi? It would change everything. This is the Vesseling refinery in Cologne. Here in the Rhineland, the heart of Europe's steel, chemicals and manufacturing industry, this is where it all begins, where they turn crude oil into petrol, diesel, jet fuel, and the ingredients for plastics, petrochemicals, fertilizers, and pretty much everything else you can think of. The main product we're making here is really, yeah, we call it the middle distillate. So uh, this is basically diesel for transportation. It is uh, heating oil, it's quite important. It's also jet fuel to fuel the main Frankfurt uh, airport or the Cologne airport, for instance. Another element is uh, the chemical industry. So 40% of our output goes into the chemical industry. Out of that single thing, crude oil, yeah. there's a lot of different things that come from that. Exactly. Now you're probably asking yourself, why in a report about green energy, we're here in a dirty oil refinery? Well, partly it's because some hydrogen isn't very clean. In fact, there's a whole spectrum from grey hydrogen, the stuff they make in places like this from oil and gas, to blue hydrogen, where you capture the CO2 coming out of these chimneys, to the holy grail, green hydrogen, produced without any emissions. Which brings us to this seemingly unremarkable new warehouse. We've got the demineralized water plant, so the water That's treatment water. Uh, is in, and it's actually being poured into the, uh, into the facility okay. and then lined up here next to each other in nice, uh, nice little blocks are the electrolyzer stacks. So water goes in, goes to the electrolyzers and then it comes out as hydrogen. Okay. Hydrogen comes out one end and oxygen pops up out the other. It all just starts with water. It all starts with water. You see, what you've got here is one of Europe's biggest green hydrogen projects, creating the element not from fossil fuels, but from renewable power. They'll pipe the gas back into the refinery where it can carry on doing what it already does. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, because where hydrogen gets really interesting is in its other quality as a fuel. The things that really make hydrogen special are the fact that it burns clean. You don't have point of burn CO2 emissions. And that's huge, right? Especially if you're looking at distributed applications where it's hard to capture individually. So that's one of the big important things. Another one is that it is storable. You know, we can store it, we can store it indefinitely. It can provide that seasonal flexibility, that long duration that we're looking for in a lot of different sectors. Hydrogen, in other words, isn't just about trains and flying cars. It might just be the answer to one of the biggest questions in the energy transition. However many wind turbines and solar panels we have, we will need a way of storing vast amounts of energy for when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining. A task batteries probably can't fulfill. I think the biggest role hydrogen will play is that, that intermittency and that storage and kind of uh, uh, the use for all of those parts of the energy system that you can't electrify easily. The, the high-grade heat, uh, the, the bits around long-distance mobility. Uh, because you cannot envisage a world where all of that is done with uh, electrons. So, 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 so in a sense, actually, hydrogen might be the kind of invisible bit. Uh, you know, in 2050 and 2060, hydrogen, you may not necessarily have a hydrogen car, perhaps you might, but you may not necessarily have a hydrogen car, but hydrogen will be there potentially as the backbone of the power system and for the big trucks you can't, you know, drive it yourself. Uh, exactly. It is part of the answer, but it's not a silver bullet. And this is the other critical thing you need to know about hydrogen. There's a lot of people spending a lot of money right now trying to persuade you that this gas, H2, is the answer to everything. Hydrogen in your boiler, powering your car, in planes. But actually, quite a lot of this is hype. 
I think there are areas where hydrogen is not needed and there's areas where it's absolutely needed. And then you come to the areas where the jury is still out. And we just don't know because there are a lot of technologies and we're really in day one or two of figuring out what's going on. Those are things like power generation, potentially aviation fuel. There's a lot of competing technologies as well. Here on the banks of the River Mersey is a place you probably haven't heard of before, but without what they do here, we'd all be in big trouble. In this cavernous room are machines which consume more power than the city of Liverpool, carrying out a task which doesn't just matter for hydrogen, but for, well, everything. This is one of the most important industrial sites in the country, and it's the first time anyone has been allowed in to film this place. Why? Well, let me give you a sense of what they do here. They take brine, concentrated salt water, and split it into a number of chemicals, including chlorine. What's coming out of those pipes there is what we use to purify 98% of the drinking water in this country. If this place goes down, then within seven days, we're rationing water. OK, so I've probably got your attention, but why are we really here? Well, guess what's coming out of these electrolysis cells as well as chlorine? That's right, hydrogen. Wow, OK, and this is literally, this is a electrolysis happening right now. Yes, this is called electrolysis. Uh, and when we think about making hydrogen, we could actually electrolyse water to make hydrogen. And there are no other uh, contaminants or, or byproducts come from that other than uh, oxygen and water vapour. Using pretty much the same machines? Very similar machines to what we're doing here, yes. Wow. Very I... similar technology. So it's a hundred year old technology, but it's also possibly the future. Absolutely. And Innovin, the company here, says you can repurpose its electrolysers to make green hydrogen. It is one of many companies hoping to make a killing in the new hydrogen economy. I say economy, some people prefer to call it a bubble. And not the first such bubble. The license plate tells the story, H2 for hydrogen. Back in the teeth of the 1970s oil price shock, Hollywood stars were already getting in on the craze. This car, driven by actor Jack Nicholson, is not an ordinary automobile. It's a hydrogen car. It's fueled by hydrogen that has been extracted from water by pure sunlight. There are a lot of very good things that could come from using the power of the sun. Or what about the early 2000s, when the second Gulf War prompted another look at this technology? We can change our dependence upon foreign sources of energy. We can help with the quality of the air. Bubble after bubble ended with a pop. The cars and plants too expensive, the engineering too challenging, the hydrogen molecule too small and volatile to control, and most of all, the market just not there. But might this time be different? After all, this time, governments have actually committed to net zero. And it's hard to get there without something like hydrogen for power, for chemicals, and maybe for other things too. Which brings us back to the railway and a record-breaking hydrogen train which just travelled more than a thousand kilometres on a single tank. And taking a hydrogen train is certainly an experience, even if it might go over most people's heads. Now, if this were a regular commuter train, you would be hearing the sound of diesel. But instead, it's basically silent because this is running on a fuel cell. Above here, above my head right now, is a fuel cell that's converting hydrogen from a tank into the power that is running this train. It is an entirely new concept. And we don't have anything like this in the UK yet, at least. That's why we're here in Berlin rather than Bridge End, because we're still a long way from investing as much as the Germans. I mean, my personal view is... It's definitely it, coming. It's definitely coming. I think it's a question now of when, not if. It's the timing. And for that, for that timing to work, a number of items need to be in place. The government will play an incredibly important role in this because the development of that wider economy has a large political element to it as well. So they are waiting for the governments to build the pipes and infrastructure to make it happen. And for the time being, those keen to see hydrogen in action are coming to Germany rather than the UK for this glimpse of the future. Government officials from around the world here for a test drive before they snap up one of these trains. 
what do you say to all those people who say oh, there's been a lot of hype like for you know for decades about hydrogen and what makes this moment real we're on a hydrogen train that's what makes it real you know like um you, you can South Australian government's got over 500 million of investment in hydrogen, so, so we're very, very serious. But if everyone's so serious, does this mean this isn't a bubble? Is it enough to override continued worries about the safety of this highly explosive gas? And what about cost? Up until recently, blue hydrogen, the kind you get from fossil fuels while capturing the CO2, was far cheaper than truly green hydrogen. But that's changed too. We're finding that in Europe, a green hydrogen project would be cheaper than a new blue hydrogen project today in parts of the market and depending on your renewable electricity design. And that's a flip, that's a change compared with where we were even, you know, kind of a year or so ago, is it? It's mind boggling. So green hydrogen right now is potentially cheaper than blue hydrogen. But of those, the UK's kind of got its eggs in the blue hydrogen basket more than the green hydrogen basket. Sort of. The UK has definitely sees a larger role for green in the future now than it did before. So originally the UK had a target for hydrogen that was kind of agnostic on colour entirely. Now it's doubled that target and added a carve out for green. As the next chapter of this story plays out, there are big questions for the British government. They were far more focused on blue hydrogen than most of their neighbours. They had lots of plans for investment. But now, amid the chaos in Westminster, no one's sure what the strategy is anymore. As another page in the hydrogen epic gets written, there's a chance this country, which once hoped to be the world leader, may get left behind again. <laughs>